All right, good evening, everybody. If you haven't noticed, it's Thursday and not Friday, and that's because I'm going to do some saltwater fishing tomorrow. Going to head down to the beach, and I got my big nine foot ugly stick and my Daiwa 4000C saltwater open face reel all ready to go, oiled up, strung up with some fresh line, and uh, hopefully, going to catch some drum maybe some whiting spot i don't know what's going on down there right now you never can tell that's the thing about salt water you never know what you're going to catch but uh, a lot of it's good to eat in fact i like eating uh salt water fish a lot better than fresh water i just like the flavor better and uh, the fight's pretty good you can catch big fish and fresh or salt and a lot of what we catch just standing on the beach is just pan fish but Hell, I'll take uh, six or eight good pan fish for a, a crowd of four people, you know, um, to uh, a couple of big fighting drum, either one. Pan fish tastes better than the big boys anyway, a lot of times. So uh, anyway, I hope y'all got my message. I posted in all the usual places on Stunt Hanger. I actually, I accidentally posted in the open forum as well as in the at the bench thread so um got got a chance i see uh, uh jamie checked in and said he might drop in and the post i put in the open forum so um hope you all will come around i hope we uh get enough people that uh noticed that i had posted a day early uh, but since i won't be able to do it tomorrow i figured we'd try it tonight and also, you probably saw my uh, announcement, and we talked about it on Monday's uh, stream, that uh, Wednesdays have been so slow, that at least during the summer, that we're just going to quit doing Wednesdays, just stick with uh, Mondays and Fridays, and uh, any other day, I get a wild hair and feel like talking to y'all, I'll uh, log in, see who we can uh, hook up with. Um, anyway, so I'll just sit here and wait for y'all to drop in. Hope we get some visitors. I started out the other night talking uh, about some things I had seen on Stunt Time. Oh, hey, Sparky, how you doing? Yeah, pretty good. Uh, I just thought I'd join you while you're getting started here. It's almost my bedtime. I got a few minutes. Yeah, okay. Well, um, are you in a, you said something about uh, that led me to believe you were in a different hotel. Or are you somewhere else tonight? It looks like the same place. No, it's the same place. Um, however, let me try this. <clears throat> I bought this little thing right here, which is a hotspot. Uh, and I'm going to sign out of this network and turn the hotspot on and see if I can broadcast. And if I can broadcast, I'm going to be going to uh, a contest Sunday in Muncie at the Paid Circles, and I'm going to try to broadcast from there. So, uh, uh, but instead of, in, we'll just have a live show. I mean, it, it won't be the whole thing because this thing just sucks up the bandwidth super fast. Yeah. But let me turn this on and give it a try. Okay, hot spots come up. Oh, there we go. Yeah. And <clears throat> I'm going to sign into that network. Now, I don't know whether I, I'm going to lose you or not, but uh, if I do, I'll come back on. Okay. Okay, it says that it's up and running. It's, uh, we got internet access on 14. There we go. Now you look frozen. Are you still with us? I am. Uh, I am uh, on the hotspot now. Okay. Now you look okay. You look like you froze up for just a minute, but it was probably just shaking hands. I did when I changed networks. Yeah. So I guess it'll work. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and switch back to the other network now. 
Is, is the uh, audio okay and the video? Yeah, the audio and video are fine. Okay, cool. Uh, I'm going to have to get, I only have one gig on this. I'll have to get some more because this thing will burn up about one gig an hour. So let me switch back to the other network. Okay. I might lose you. All right. Okay, that was pretty seamless. It did stop for a minute, though, didn't it? It did freeze for just a minute, yeah, when it was shaking hands with the network again. Let me turn this thing off. I can't tell any difference in the quality of audio or video between one or the other, so that's good. So you're just going to walk around with that in your pocket as you take your camera to different events at the at the contest and broadcast like that is that what you're saying well, i'm gonna i'm gonna try i'm gonna have to use my laptop to broadcast to begin with and uh i need to turn it back off there we go and um i'm gonna try to see if i can hook my telephone up to it so i can broadcast yeah yeah just make sure you got hard to carry my charge on everything because i tried uh, uh doing video on my cell phone and it it sucked it down in a big hurry so it sucked it down faster than my charger could keep up with it well, i'm not too worried about the battery i'm more worried about uh the bandwidth it's yeah. uh, 15 dollars a gig yeah you'll rack it up in a hurry with video and audio so yeah you don't want to get a big bill and find out you really blew the bandwidth out of the water well it doesn't matter because this is prepaid so when i'm out it oh, just turns off it doesn't keep oh. going. okay Oh well, I'm on. The, I'm all packed up, ready to go fishing. I hadn't been down to the beach in a long time. Usually in the summer, we try to spend a couple of weeks down there, but uh, weren't able to do it this year. So we got some friends that live at the beach, so we're going to try to get down to visit them for at least a weekend every month during the summer. So uh, tomorrow's our first first ride down there, and. Uh, I got my gear all packed up. I'm gonna go do some fishing, buy some fresh shrimp. There's a guy that we know down there that sells fresh shrimp uh, out of his truck that uh, his brother and cousins catch. And so he's got part of the family out catching shrimp on their little trawler, and then he sells it out the back of his truck. And it's wonderful stuff for about four bucks a pound. He gets a big old shrimp with the heads still on, which is actually my preference. Lots of people don't want the heads on it, but if you boil shrimp with the heads on it, I think they taste a whole lot better. And uh, they make fresh shrimp makes the best fish bait too. That old stinky shrimp that you get out of refrigerators at bait stores is no good compared to eating quality shrimp for fishing. I was watching Monday's video and it looked like you had a pretty good crowd, but you kind of made one mistake, and I don't think that you were aware of it. When you take your mouse and you click on a picture and it's highlighted with a white box, it stays on that screenshot it, for everybody. It it. Yeah. It, did I stay on somebody too long? A long time. Yeah, you don't want to have anybody click. That way it'll change people uh, yeah I, pro I didn't realize i had done that but i know that uh, uh it does record whatever i click on so if somebody's showing a plane or something i always click on it so that it'll stay on them but uh, if i forgot to click off of them when they were through i apologize I, no big deal. For that. he just had his phone and it was a picture of his face for about 15 minutes oh brother <laughs> 
Okay. Yeah, I did not mean to do that. Sorry. I'll uh, watch out for that in the future. And I did it one time before uh, when I got on. I, my son called me on the phone one night and I walked away and realized uh, when I had muted my mic, I had clicked myself up and locked it in. So, yeah, uh, we don't uh, want to do that. So, yeah, I'm learning lots of little things like that, but that was just foul up on my part. I'll be home next week. I'll try to see if I can run the, the shows. I'm, I'm not going to do Wednesday because it is a dead day. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure this show here is going to be much either because it's yeah. a kind of an off day. Yeah, a lot of people aren't looking for it, so they might not see it unless they notice they get a notification through YouTube or if they see it on Stunt Hanger. But I don't think most people click the notify button on stunt hanger so when i when i uh, uh uh posted it tonight uh this afternoon that i was going to be on i put a little picture up with an arrow pointing to um how to uh now what did i do uh, oh no, to how to click notify on stunt hanger so but uh, you know we hit our all-time high too on uh on youtube we have three dislikes and you know what it's it's like appearance judging. They clicked the uh, video I did um, Brodax. I got three yeah. dislikes. Mercy. I don't I don't I don't understand the point, but uh you can't figure, can't figure out people out sometimes. We hadn't been getting too many thumbs downs. Just that one, some I think it's just one guy that'll thumbs down our uh, 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 hangouts. But uh, sometimes he does it, and sometimes he doesn't. And I asked on like I asked on the hangout the other night for whoever wants to give it a thumbs down to please let us know, contact us somehow, and let us know what we can do better. No. Put a, uh, the word out. Anybody who finds out who it is, give them a thumbs down. Yep. Right on top of the head. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. I give a fuck. <laughs> so, uh, Minnesota, is that the one that's called Land of the Lakes? Yep. Well, uh, so is that a, are y'all in big uh freshwater fishing territory up there what, what's what's land why does it call it land of the lakes y'all just got a I lot of water there. there i don't live in minnesota oh okay. <laughs> i don't know where do you live missouri no missouri that's the show state because okay. we're dumber in the box that's, of rocks oh i see okay i'm sorry i get the minnesotans and the missourians mixed up <laughs> That's the reason why I got video now, to sh so I can show what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and everybody can show you what they're doing. Now I've had fun doing these hangouts, though. We had a hilarious one last Friday night. That was the most fun I think we've ever had. The biggest crowd, too. It was Monday. Uh, let's see, Friday and Monday both were big crowds. And Gerald from New Zealand with his sons uh, came in, and everybody enjoyed them. Takes a few minutes to get the accent figured out so we can understand what they're saying, especially the kids, you know, because kids speak faster than the adults. And, and uh, so they're enthusiastic about it, though. I'm glad to see that. And ain't like the United States. Nobody cares about airplanes. Oh, we're gonna go to a big air show Saturday here in Dayton. Oh yeah. What's up? What kind of air show is it? Just military and Thunder, Thunderbirds. Today while at work a, a uh, Spitfire flew overhead. I could hear that Merlin motor running. I looked went to the door, looked up and wrong Spitfire went over overhead. Pretty low altitude too, probably five six hundred feet. Wow! I'm gonna go over and uh, see what's happening on the 
YouTube channel. Okay, Charles Williams is watching. Says good evening from Northwest Indiana. And oh, I've got to mute myself. Excuse me. And Steve uh, Sean Ecker. I hope I pronounced that right. Tom Creasy's watching. Says uh, caught me. Catch me off guard. This is Thursday. Cool. So, Tom, come on in, buddy. Don't just sit out there and watch us. Put the link into the YouTube channel. I did. It's right at the top. I'll post it again just for good luck. Here we go. Boom. Okay, folks. There's another copy of the link. Y'all come on in. Come in, Charles. Let us meet you. I can't do that because I didn't start it. Right. But um, we got some pretty good participation from the YouTube crowd the other night. and Had some uh, chat going back and forth. They they'd uh, uh, say something or come up with uh, adding into something we were talking about and I was able to uh, incorporate them into the broadcast. So that worked out pretty well. And uh, I've tried to make it about every 10 or 15 minutes when I go over there and take a look. Oh, oh. I got the Q&A over here. Uh oh, hearing oh. feedback now. Come on. There it is. Let's see. What's the showcase? I got some extra buttons here I've never seen. I've never seen. On which uh, page? On the on our uh, live chat page? Yeah, on the left. I you got, got your window. You got your window or the uh, microphone going on the YouTube channel and it's feeding back. Uh, uh, no, but no, that's, that's Chris. Chris. When he logs, he logs in, in, we get that, and we yeah, can't get it to stop until he puts his headphones in. Is it doing it again hey, without the headphones? Yeah, same thing yeah, as same always. Thing as always. All right, He's, that's his telephone doing it. Got something got hidden something in the background, in the background that's looking through. through. He knows how to yeah, fix, it, how to fix it. it. If I... Turn his microphone down a little bit, it'll get better, but it almost clears up completely when he puts his headphones in. Up until then, I hear everything you say echo. Just me. It doesn't make y'all echo, it just makes me echo. I hear you echoing. Yeah. Well, I, I heard you echo that time, too, so. I might be mistaken about that point, but he's going to get his headphones in. Chris is a machine. He was able to answer good questions for me the other night. All right. All right, Chris. How you doing tonight, buddy? Uh, I'm not too bad. My, uh, I was running up my uh, junior ringmaster, and the front end fell off in the motor. Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. While it was in the air? No. I was just doing a bench, but all the screws in the front here, on the front case, it's an Enya. Yeah. And uh, damn thing loosened up on me. I'm like, it started, the, whole, the whole front end started rattling and shut off. Better put you some lock nuts on there or something. That's what I'm working on right now. Got everything cleaned up, put it back together, put some uh, some Loctite on it, and hopefully it won't fall apart again. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah, I got this off uh, eBay, and uh, I've run it before. I probably got, I don't know, probably a quart of gas through it. And, you know, <clears throat> ran great, runs great. I don't know. So hopefully well, it doesn't here's do. A, let's see. I got something for you. Here's my uh, twister. I finally got the controls hooked back up. He's standing upright on my bench jig. So uh, hopefully I'll be flying her pretty soon. Can y'all see that? Yeah, that's cool. Oh, yeah. yeah. What size motor? I got a. FP40 that uh, 
John Tate uh, reworked, uh, and uh, and uh, it runs great. It runs a four-two break if you like that sort of thing, like a like an old timey one. So it's a yeah. beautiful running engine. But uh, wrecked it, wrecked it back in the fall, and now I'm finally just getting around to getting it back together. Yeah, I know those things are like. You rock them and you look at them and you stare at them and you're like, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I thought it was hopeless when I first saw it, but uh, Walter Umlin sent me a new wing kit for it. So, you know, that was like a a, a, a gift from heaven. So uh, I put it together and I hope it'll fly better than it did before because I uh, know more things than I did the first time I built it. And that's always sure. good. Well, I got my tagline working on here in the lower third. Got your what working? The ta you got? Do you have the uh, mic? Uh, can you see my face now? No, I can't. Yeah, that, I see it now down oh, in the okay. bottom right. Yeah. I know, but am I popping up on the screen? Yes, you are. Yeah, oh, yeah, and you do do have a. Uh, a uh, uh, message line under you uh, with a blue background says stunt hanger sparky uh, minnesota mike just came in hey hey mike how you doing how'd it go at the races the other day pretty good till my transmission broke in half oh crap but it ran a nice what kind, of, what kind of transmission you got in that thing 727 mike's got a uh Dodge Dart with a 440 in it. It looks like one badass machine, too. What is that? A 60? What'd you say? A 67? 64. 64. Okay, yeah. It's the one with the. Uh, 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 yeah, 67 is a boxy one. The 64 has got the round headlights and. Yeah. Pretty cool machine. So tell me again. I didn't understand what you meant on the transmission. What kind of tranny has it got? Uh, 727 in it. I don't know what that is. Is that a automatic? Yeah, automatic. Dog. Is that two speed? Three. Three? Yeah. What stall speed do you have on the converter? 4,500. So it launches pretty good. You got 9010 shocks on it on the front? Uh, I made an altered wheel. Face. It's got a uh, straight front axle in it. Uh, Here end up 12 inches. It's a nostalgia car, just for fun. The high boy. About where I would used to dump the clutch on mine, but I ran a Muncie four speed. And that was when every, in 1980, was about when everybody was switching to automatics, I guess. But I always ran the Muncie because it was fun. And all I was doing was bracket racing anyway. Right. I, I run a 960 with it, though. That was my best time so far. Wow. Now, you're talking about a quarter mile? Quarter mile. Yeah. Thank goodness somebody's still running quarter miles. Now, I, I can't stand eighth miles. It's all in the launch. If you ain't got them in 60 feet, you better be, you better be getting on it because you're not going to go around very many people. Right. I never even... I never even heard of an eighth mile race. Ah, uh, that's what everybody seems to be switching to these days. Yeah, we usually my built my car for eighth mile over at the Eagle Field. You know, it's pretty fun out there, but that's just an old runway. Yeah. Yeah. The reason why they switched to eighth mile, Rusty, is that Scott Coletta got killed in a quarter mile, and they're just cars are just too fast. Yeah. Now they run a thousand feet. Yeah, no. Bakersfield, Bakersfield is a nostalgic track still, so it's still a quarter mile. Mm -hmm. But is Fontana still open, or Irwindale, or Pomona? Any of those tracks open? Yeah, Pomona's still open. Uh, Irwindale, and I don't know about Fontana. I think that one might be shut. Down. Carlsbad. I don't know about the Carlsbad. 
I had an L88 uh, in a 34 Ford five window coupe that I used to run at Carlsbad in uh, Irwindale. It was a 10 second car. Right. Sounds like that would be pretty nice to have nowadays. Yeah, I, I kind of miss it. I mean, that was my real only real a fat fendered car. Uh, of course, it didn't have the fenders on it, but. You know, that 34 was so cool. I ended up twisting the frame, so I sold it. Yeah, my old Camaro was strictly just a backyard production, but I, got, I, I ran 1275. So it was probably the fastest quarter miles I ever ran in it. That's pretty good, though. That's honking along pretty good. You, and it was street legal, too, so I could take it out on the street and run red lights but uh, uh fine on the that, too until the cops find me yeah they, they well, my coop my coop i ran on the street and uh at i don't know 55 miles an hour the the rpm was around 5000 <laughs> it had 513s in it it was ridiculous yeah, i had a 513 in mine too yeah it was you no, no good for the highway on top end so but it would sure get there in a hurry Right. What's your guys' weather been like? This week it's well, been drizzly for a couple of days and only only in the uh, high 80s and low 90s. Uh, but today the sun came out and it was a little bit better, but still not hot. Still just in the, I think, early 90s. Yeah, I think yeah. that's about what it's supposed to be at the beach this weekend, too. We've been 110, 113. We're supposed to start cooling down. Tomorrow, they said only 109. Oh. What? Where That'll be less. Mercury? <laughs> it's miserable. What's the humidity like, though, when it's that hot? When, when it's that you know, It's really weird. Usually, it's dry, but this year, it's been humid with it, too. It's, it's horrible. When it's dry at that temperature and the wind blows, you you get a little bit of a chill even sometimes when it takes the sweat off of you, it evaporates so fast. I don't care if it's wet or dry, it's hot. <laughs> yeah. We we're supposed to go fly combat Saturday. I don't think I'm going to do that because of the simple fact that it's going to be 110 degrees. Yeah. Well, do take that alcohol and do that, that menthol alcohol and do that trick I was telling you about to cool yourself down when you got, get, start getting overheated, you know? Pour a little bit of that green alcohol in some cooler ice water and wring that towel over your neck and it'll make you scream out loud, but it'll bring your core temperature down in a hurry. Okay. Oh. How was the uh, bro deck? deal up there i haven't really been on the stunt hanger to look around yet but sparky can report on it i wasn't able to make it well i wrote actually i did a uh i did a video on uh, bob brookins paint seminar i did a video on uh oh shoot uh appearance points i think i did two or three but but i have uh, a week's worth of footage that I'm going to edit when I get home down into about a two-hour movie that'll be available over on Vimeo. And I watched, I'll post the link. Uh, I watched Bob's painting uh, clinic. That was pretty good. Yeah, he did. He wasn't real happy when uh, when I interjected that I clear coat with urethane using dope thinner <laughs> as, the, as the reducer, but <laughs> that's the way it goes. Yeah. Let's see, we got, uh, oh, Chris looks like he's checked out for a second. It works for me. I mean, I, I know a lot of things that I do. They're not kosher to do. And sometimes, you know, shit happens that will screw things up. Hey, does Randolph make a non-tautening clear dope? Uh, yeah, don't they? Speed is non tightening because I uh put together a free flight plane, and when I put the dope on there, I didn't see what it was. Man, it shrunk the ribs back in, the leading edge was meeting with the trailing edge. <laughs> oh, god, that's terrible! Yeah, and those, those are such 
fragile wings on those uh, free. F oh, well, now I'm getting free flight mixed up with uh, 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 soaring. I guess that's the same kind of plane, right? Where you, you yeah, pretty close. Yeah, you power it up and ride thermals with it. Right. Hey guys, I gotta go. It's my bedtime. I got a strict adherence to time. I gotta get up early. I appreciate you hanging with Rusty, and I appreciate you, Rusty, uh, for doing this. And when Good I get home, when I get home next week, I'll edit up the uh, Brodak video. And for those who want to see it, they can. They're gonna have to pay for it, but it's gonna be on Vimeo. And the reason I made made it pay per view is the thumbs down so you can thank those guys <laughs> okay. all right so, i don't know if i'm going to toss way. in the 10 bucks or not, but. All, all right, right. see you later see you. Mark. Thank you. thank you i wonder what happened to chris we got a picture of his child with those big white glasses on <laughs> I you know, guess that's who it is. once in a while it seems like everybody locks up here. I don't know if it's on my phone or what, but I don't know. I don't think it's you doing it. That's a that's a weird problem that he's got with the echo and has to put the earphones in. We never have figured out what that is. If he <laughs> ever gets a laptop or something, maybe he can try it with that. Maybe it won't do it. Oh. I was watching the other day, and a little bald-headed guy got on. Man, did his microphone squeal. <laughs> yeah, he got on for a minute and then got back off. Yeah. Yeah, he uh, posted over on uh, YouTube, I think. I forget what his name is now, but he uh, uh, apologized for that problem, said he was going to get it fixed up. So we'll, we'll see him again sometime. Right, right. I'm just waiting here. My wife's been gone all week, so I got to go pick her up at the airport. It's too hot to do anything outside, so I figured oh, I'll go on here and see what's happening. Yeah. Did you know we were going to be on Thursday night, or did you just happen on to us? It popped up on my uh, the on my phone. It oh, on your flooded. notification. Yeah. Good. Okay. Yeah, I was going to. Yeah, ask I was. He could. Uh, disconnect my name on stunt hanger and then uh, i could come in as new because i can't remember what my password was or anything and i'm not sure what my old uh, username was he can probably locate it and get you set back up with your old name but uh yeah well next time he comes in ask him about it so or if i think of it i'll mention it to him too Right, right. I've been trying to get signed up for it again, and man, I just can't remember my password. It was like 10 years ago when I was on there. So. Well, you know, I have, uh, I always make a mistake whenever I have to log into Stunt Hanger, which is only after I've cleared my browsing history and I have to re log in. And I forget because I'm rocking Rusty, RKN Rusty, uh, on my avatar, but Actually, when I sign in, I sign in as Rusty Knowlton because that's how I registered. And everybody registers with their real name at Stunt Hanger. So you might try putting your real, real name in and try that and try that. Name. I, I don't know. I'll have to try it though. Yeah. Hey, Chris is back. Yeah, my phone locked up. Got Who is that we're seeing with little white glasses on? Is that your child? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my little icon dude? Yeah. No, that's not my child, but <laughs> that is uh it's uh it's a puppet from a movie. I oh. can't that's a puppet, really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's Kim Yong Ju or whatever in a puppet form. Uh okay. It's funny as hell. I laugh every time I see it. I know. I've had that for years. Uh, there's a movie, and it's about these little, uh, these, the whole movie's animated marionettes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's about uh, some, they're superheroes, and they go and 
do their thing, their superhero thing. I can't remember the name of the movie, but as soon as I remember, I'll let you know. But it, it's the funniest okay. thing you can ever watch. You have to watch it. It is funny. <laughs> How do you put pictures up on that? I don't understand that part of it. That That is from my Google account. Oh, okay. you got to go into Google. Yeah. When, when you go in your Google profile and, uh, and but, yes, upload but, a picture, and that's where it comes from. Stunt Hanger and Google will show the same uh, avatar, too, because they are one in the same entity now. Oh. Any, any of you guys saltwater fishermen? Wow. Uh, I went years ago, but just on a... What? I've never been... I've been on the ocean plenty of times, but I just haven't. Yeah. Oh, uh, well, that's where I'm headed tomorrow. Go do some fishing down at the beach. We're only cool. 100, 130 miles from the beach here. And uh, so uh, I try to get down there as often as possible and surf fish. I just stand on the beach and throw it out in the water with some shrimp on the hook. Oh, you get uh, all the. Uh, there you catch you never know what's going to be on there when you reel it in but uh, 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 some of my favorites were black drum which are um, a pretty good fighting decent sized fish with a minimum limit of 14 inches from uh, nose to tail um, and uh, uh, whiting, spot croakers, uh, those are more like panfish. The drum's bigger, but the, the panfish are great when you can catch 10 or 12 of them and then feed the family at night because I'm, I'm good at frying fish, so I love to, I love to fry them up and eat them. Um, there, there's all sorts of different things we catch. Bluefish, not wild about eating them, but they put up a good fight. And um, uh, I don't know, there must be... Uh, just dozens of different varieties we catch. Pompano sometimes. I want to go out and try the wings once. I get that pretty big. Hey, Mike, can you turn your microphone up a little louder? I don't know how to do that either. Let me see. I can do it from here, uh, maybe. Let me, let me see if I can do that. Go to my toolbox. I'll go to my controls. And Minnesota Mike, uh, turn him up. Come on. All right, Mike, say something now and see if it sounds different. Any better now? Yeah. Okay, that worked better. I turned you all the way up. You know, I used to have a home computer, and then I used to spend so much time on it when I was gold panning and stuff like that, and then I finally got out of it. I told my wife to get rid of it. Now I got a little telephone. <laughs> yeah. Android or iPhone? iPhone. I've got an Android myself. I've had a, I had a Windows phone, but uh, it was too basic, but it was a good entry level phone for me at the time. I'd never had a smartphone before. So um, that gave me a easy, easy, um, practice on it now i got an android and it's pretty good but it'll never replace a full-blown desktop pc or a good laptop yeah i'm thinking about getting a laptop again just to i don't know just to have i guess they're cheap enough yeah they are yeah. Yeah. now yeah just get enough memory don't get anything with less than eight gigabytes of ram right ram is important yeah, six maybe, but eight, eight's good. My son bought a, a a new computer with six, and mine's got eight. And just comparing the two, I can I can see the difference. I'm glad I got the eight gigs. Oh man, I just poured coffee on my chest. Poured <laughs> coffee on my Led Zeppelin T-shirt. Oh no! <laughs> it's had worse poured on it. Sorry about that lid. <laughs> I 
asked Moses. So what you guys going to do this weekend? Any uh, flying plans? Uh, free flight on Sunday, I know for sure. I don't know about Saturday, though. Sunday, they said we could start out about 6, so we'll get out there while it's still cool, and that should be fun. Now, you've have you got an electric launch on your uh, free flight planes? No, just a little TD-449. Oh, okay, that's cool. That's even better. Yeah, yeah. I'm just getting into that again, too. I, I Actually, I shouldn't say again, because in Minnesota, it was too windy. I've never seen anybody do it back there, so I come moved here, and it, everybody got me involved in it. it. It's pretty fun, except for the chase. Sometimes you got to walk miles. Yeah. My flying buddy uh, had a hobby uh, as a full, full-scale full uh, uh, glider pilot, and uh, he's also a... a airplane pilot too so he knows a lot about the weather and the air and he's taught me so much about what to look for and what the different clouds mean and how to how to pick out thermals and identify them and also in control line flying how to deal with thermals how to how to know what's happening when they come through and you have to wait for one to pass or when you're telling the judges where you want them to stand um you know whether what you're feeling is the prevailing or if it's a thermal and it's going to change in a few minutes. So I actually think I won my last contest because I knew what to do with thermals on a day uh, when they were really coming through. And the guy who was my closest competition did not adjust to the wind as well. And um, I beat him by six points. And I think if, if I hadn't made those adjustments for the wind where he didn't, then uh, it would have been a different story. So right. That's nice stuff to know. Well, I put a few of these and I, that's about a three, four minute flight before it DTs, but sometimes I forget to light it and the thing will take off and then you really got to chase it. What does it do? Just uh, burn up and release a clamp that slink, clamps your fuel line shut? Rubber band. Oh, okay. That and the fuel timers and all that, you know. It's, it's, uh, I've seen some planes here. Uh, I can't remember what class it is, but you could have eight to ten thousand dollars in a free flight plane. And I, I don't see myself ever getting into that one. No, I don't think so. Even in control line, you can put tons of money in it and, 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 if if you're really wanting to go to the nets and be a a, a a a perennial top five, maybe you know, go ahead and spend your money. But for just what we're doing, just having fun, there's no need at all for that kind of that kind of cash. I tell you what, Howard Rush, Fitzgerald's playing, uh, Brett Fox. Uh, there's a lot of them from on the west coast their planes are just beautiful they always come october to the contest here david fitzgerald came to the triple tree drone all contest back in may it was nice meeting him and he's a really uh, 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 friendly guy you know no reason to expect he wouldn't be but we put these guys on pedestals sometimes and expect them to be you know uh, uh, something different from just regular folks but right they're just regular folks. I love that. Yeah, he's a nice guy. He uh, actually judged my grandson this year. We I had my grandson fly at the contest, and he was just beginning. I He flew it around in circles for a tank and stuff. Then he started doing loops and stuff. So I had him try to do a loop. Well, the wind that day was 20 mile an hour. The airplane went straight up and straight into the ground. And we tried picking it up, and we thought, well, we'll just leave the rest on the ground. And then everybody else could fly instead of holding them up. Well, Fitzgerald and some other guy went out there and picked up all the pieces and brought them to my grandson and said, that yeah. happened. Time. Yeah, that's just part of it. You better get used to picking up pieces if you're going to fly control line because it's going to happen sooner or later. Yeah, then he flew a few more times after that, and then he come up to me and said he didn't want to do it no more. So I don't know. Oh, man. 
Oh well. At that age, or nothing made me happy. So I, I'm gonna try to get them back into it though, but I don't know. You can't push them. Yeah, uh, they'll push back if you do. Um, but uh, if he likes it, he'll do it. If not, maybe he'll find something equally uh, uh, stimulating. Because I mean, you can't be. You can't be dumb and do this. It's it's uh, something that takes a lot of mechanical skills and and intellectual intellectual skills too. Yep. Tell you what, though, he picked up on it the first flight. He never had no troubles. He didn't. Re he crashed only two times, and he only flew maybe uh, fifteen times. So then uh, we put him in how the old contest. Is he? So I don't know. It was too soon. Does he like the race cars? Uh, you know, I told him when he was a little kid that I was building it, you know, and he was kind of excited. And I said, well, I'm going to give it to you when you get old enough. And he kept saying, oh, man, it's going to be great to drive to school. <laughs> now we have no interest in it. So I don't know what's going on with him. Yeah. They got so much to think about at the er this early time in life. It's you never know. I mean, they get halfway through college before they really figure out something, if if even then. And I put my first motor together without no help with just a book when I was probably 12 or 13. Yeah. You know, and it, I guess kids ain't like that nowadays. I, I used to, anything with a motor, I would take apart and see how it run, you know. Yeah, me too. I built my first motor with a paperback book from the library called how to how to rebuild your small block chevy and then a, another one i followed it up with how to hot ride your small block chevy i think those were haynes books but, yeah. uh, they were good books had a lot of good information in them right well written with shitty pictures yeah but it's, nowadays, I don't think the kids have anything. You know, he's really into the video game thing. And I told my daughter, I said, that's not the best thing. But I guess if it makes him happy, as long as he only does it for so long and you get him off of it, you know. That's the thing. Yeah, if you can get them to where they're not obsessed with it. And we wouldn't buy my son a, a video game station, whatever it was, Xbox and that sort of thing back then and um of course all of his friends had them and he wanted one but we never would buy it and um finally when he got into high school he started building his own computers and playing the games on that and we got to the point where okay you're either going to cut your own throat or you're going to realize how to manage your time and he cut his own throat but he ended up graduating from high school and um, going on to college and doing extremely well. And now he's a, a, a chemist, you know, so we're proud of him. He's yeah. 30, 31 or 32 now. Yeah, yeah. you got to always be proud of your kids. It don't matter, you know, even if they're a janitor, it don't matter as long as it's what they want to do. That's what I told my kids. Yeah. That it isn't all about money. It's what you want to do. And a good work ethic. If you're going to do something, do a good job of it. Yeah. You know, I was going to be uh, going to the game and fish department. I always was into that big and my dad and everybody told me don't go into it. There's no money into it. Well, now I'm 52 years old and I'm broke down. My back is shot. I had a heat stroke and all this other stuff. And I, I wish I would have done the, the game and fish department. <laughs> ah, well. Yeah, you don't get do-overs, though, and if you did, they wouldn't work out like you hoped they would anyway, I think. so. Exactly. I like where I am now, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade any of it. No, you can't do that either. I could have probably picked better friends along the way. I always picked friends that uh, were smarter than me, but um, maybe they were uh, – a little more nefarious than they should have been <laughs> led me down a few roads I probably shouldn't have gone down but I guess that's a learning experience too that's all it all makes up who I am now so yep that's true
And if you change one thing, everything changes. Yeah, that's right. That's why do-overs don't ever work. <laughs> I see you got your plane almost back together. It's looking pretty good. Oh, yeah, it, it is. Um, been so slow on it, but I sure would be glad to get back to flying it. And uh, then I can get started on that, that cardinal kit. And uh, hopefully I'll still have the twister when I finish the cardinal and I'll be able to figure out which one is the flagship and which one is the backup. Right. The twister fly is awful nice. I know I'm still tempted to build. I got a little Satan in the kit that I've had since I was probably about 12 years old. Those been are so much fun. Been chopping on the bit to throw it together, and I thought, oh, no, I'm just going to keep it the way it is. I'll, if I do, I'd make it a little bigger, a big spring. Yeah, well, you can get a junior Satan or scale it up. Yep. Hey, Chris. Hey. Damn phone keeps shutting off. What's going on with that? You got a bad signal <clears throat> or you got a bad battery or something? No, battery's full. It's just this phone's been acting up the last six months. It just, if I'm on Facebook, it'll just shut off. Uh, or if is I'm it an Android or an iPhone? It's an, uh, it's an Android. It's a few years old, so you know how that is. Yeah. Then, <clears throat> they don't make phones work for a couple years to make you go buy a new one. I always sign two-year contracts with Verizon, and my two years is coming up this August. And it, right now, there doesn't seem to be anything bigger, fancier, and newer than what I've already got. I like no. the LG with the big screen that I've got. So I might That's keep it as long as it keeps working. But I'll stay with flex. Android. I'm not going to switch to I. I hate iPhones. My my do, my step my stepdaughter's got iPhone. I can't stand it. Everything's a pain. What in don't you like about it? The format, just the way it works. It's just I don't like it. Yeah, it, it takes a lot to learn it too. It resembles a Windows phone, um, yes. close more closely than it does an Android system. <clears throat> I hate that when you buy one from Verizon that uh, the manufacturer puts so much of their crapware on it. I'd rather have one oh, with yeah. just, just raw operating system and let me figure out what apps I need rather than fill it up with all kinds of uh, uh, junk like uh, uh, the NFL network and all that. And I don't right. I mean that your health monitor. I don't need a health monitor for Christ's sake. <laughs> I'll live this long without one. Yeah, I, already, I, don't I already know I'm dying very slowly, so I don't need no thing telling me I'm dying slow. No kid. <laughs> Do they have Metro PC where you're at? Do Who they have what? Metro PC telephone? No, I'm not familiar with that one. Yeah, we got Metro I had PC, it. right? And it's the biggest junk I've ever seen. I it. I'd be talking to somebody, and they'd have to call me back 20 <clears> times to finish the sentence. They probably don't have oh, enough towers. I went over to 18. Well, they ride on the Sprint tower. Uh, but I went over to AT&T. They gave me a new phone and everything for uh, everything I needed for $80 a month. That's not too bad. Do you use much bandwidth? Yeah, I'm on it every day. <laughs> Most of the time I'm on a Wi-Fi, uh, um, but uh, I, don't, I don't do a lot of web surfing. And I guess that doesn't really use much bandwidth, um, and neither does like Pandora when I'm driving and listening to music. It doesn't seem to use much either, but uh, if you're downloading music and videos that that's where it'll really eat it up so i'm careful just to use wi-fi when i do that yeah i got wi-fi here oh, and it worked out pretty good <clears throat> what you doing balancing a prop there chris 
Yeah, I'm trying to figure. You know, when I put it on one way, the balance is perfect. I flip it around and it drops. It drops the blade. So I think it's not central on the shaft or something. It's weird. I don't know. This is you a, don't have a magnetic. Uh, you don't have a magnetic stand. You can hang it in. That's what it is. Oh, okay. So, it it might be that the holes not drilled through the hub straight. Sometimes they don't do so well that way. I got to get going. Here. I have to go pick up my wife at the airport. You guys have a nice night. Okay, Mike. Good to see you. Take it easy. All right. And uh, we'll see you back here on Monday, I guess. All right. Sounds good. All right. So, uh, Rusty, you, you've used uh, smaller motors. What what prop size would an 09 be good with? Uh, actually, an 09 is one that I've never used, um, but I would guess that you would start with 7 inches and, and go in the 7 and 8 area, but um, I'm only guessing, so I don't really know. But uh, that, would, that would be where I would think you would start. Now with yeah. o, uh, 4 nines and o six ones, I use uh, 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 anywhere from a five three to a six three. Rarely a six three anymore. Right. But uh, I get the master air screw six threes and cut them down to whatever size I want. Um, the only time I'll use anything else is an APC, and that is if I want to slow a plane down but keep the engine running fast enough to benefit from its torque curve, especially the engines that use SPI, then uh, I'll, I'll put an APC 6.2 on it. And that's like if I want to uh, uh, fly a pattern and let the engine still scream where it's happy, but it's the plane will move slow enough with a, what did I say, a 6.2 is what I meant. I'm not sure what I said, but yeah, 6.2 APC is good for that. Um, yeah, so I, <clears throat> I got some 7.3, seven, 7.4, seven, 7.5, seven, and 7.6 seven, pitch. Yeah, I couldn't even guess on which pitch to use, but yeah, and one of those is probably going to get it in its happy spot. Well, for first flight, I probably want to run with a small pitch, right? Uh, that would slow it down just to make sure you got control of it, yeah. And uh, you can even turn a prop around backwards and uh, see, if, uh, um, see, if, see if that helps you keep it under control. Okay. Uh, let's see. We got somebody named Rebecca. Rebecca Lane. I wonder if that's any kin to Ed Ruane. Hello, Rebecca. Turn your uh, microphone and your camera on. I'm seeing myself in two different windows now. So am I. You're like in her window. That's right. And I've, I'm, I'm not moving at the same time. I'm, I'm glitchy hitchy. Yeah, I see you in her window now. <laughs> That's crazy. And Minnesota Mike signed off, but I still got a Minnesota icon on here. I'm going to eject. Let's see. I'm going to eject Minnesota Mike because he signed out. Sorry, Mike, if you want back in, just sign back in. Boom, there he goes. And I am going to, okay, there's Rebecca. Rebecca, we're not, we're not seeing you or hearing you. I'm not sure what to tell you to do right now either. If you're on a regular computer, run your mouse arrow up to the, near the top and you'll see a bar with one, two, three, four, five, or six icons on it. Make sure your microphone is turned on and your camera is turned on and then 
the next one with those bars that angle of bars is your bandwidth setting you can lower it if you're having problems like what you're having now I seem to be my face seems to be back in Rebecca's window I'm gonna go over to YouTube and see if these folks are over there hang on just a second while I check because it's been a while let's see Terry Forbes is over there Tom Creasy there but I don't see Rebecca on YouTube so I'm not sure what's going on but uh, Oh, Terry Forbes says he fishes salt water every day. Fishes for snook. All right, Terry. Had blackened snook with yellow rice tonight. That's pretty cool. He uh, says he's a, a, a long-time RC soaring pirate, pilot, not pirate. Well, he might be a pirate, too. You never know. <laughs> okay, I'm on a... I ain't got no hills big enough for that stuff. <clears throat> Russ, do you ever fly radio control airplanes? I have not. I made one flight with radio control. My uh, club president had one of those soft, foamy with uh, airplanes, and it must have had about a 30-inch wingspan with a, a mid-engine pusher. And uh, I, I took the controls and I managed to fly it. Let's see, it was uh, three channels, and I threw I flew it across <clears throat> the runway, turned around, and came back, and was making the turn to do another pass, and got confused and poked it into the ground. <laughs> so I gave him the radio back then. It didn't hurt anything, but that's my only <laughs> flight on an RC plane. But hey, I flew it all the way across and all the way back. When it's going away, it's easy, but when it's coming back at you, it's all backwards. Well, I've driven some RC cars before, and so I'm kind of okay with the controls like that. But uh -huh. if you get confused, you got to turn around and look over your shoulder. Sometimes that helps you get your hand-eye coordination back if you lose it. Yep. Yeah, but that's, I, that's it for me. I've, I've never really been fascinated with RC. No. <clears throat> yeah, I like it all equal, you know. It's there's a lot of cool stuff. I got these little foam jobs, these uh, UMX. They're only like 16 inch wingspans, uh -huh. four channel radios. I mean, they're, they're cool as hell to fly in the backyard because I've cartwheeled them. I can't tell you how many times, and you know, go back right up in the air, do some uh, uh, foam safe CA, just glue it, mm -hmm. and fly it again. I like the ones I've seen advertised in um, model aviation where you get a, a power pod that just fits uh, any number of fuselages or, or full built airplanes that are built for it. So um, I got one of them. If you rack one, yeah, you just pull the power pod out and jam it in a new one and go back to flying again. I, now, I might actually like to try that sometime, but I'd have to buy a regular one. I don't want to really buy a radio. Yeah, they stopped making those though. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, it was a fly zone. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, they stopped making them. I wonder why. Yeah. That seemed like a great thing. I don't know, man. I, I, fly zone still makes planes, but they completely dropped down line, and I got, <clears throat> was it Tower Hobbies? Was advertising. The planes for ten bucks a piece. I bought four of them. We got two, two Japanese zeros. Uh, maybe three. I don't know. I got a Falkwolf, a, a, a two or three Japanese zeros, and they're cool. Like you said, and I got a one. I got one pod, and you pop them in. It's got those little high-powered magnets. It all yeah. connects all your control surfaces. And all the servos and everything hook up to it, right? So it's all just... it's all one unit. All the servos are mounted on the on a crutch. Like a crutch with the motor, yeah. the receiver, 
the batteries there and all the servos are right there all you do is just slide it in click make sure all your all the you know magnets clicked each on each other yeah and you're good to oh go. i see so the servos are actually on the power pod yeah it's like a crutch oh, i didn't realize that i figured they were built into the airframe nope. but all right no when you take all that stuff out it's nothing but a piece of foam yeah and some some wires and that's it but they are they're sell they were selling for like 50 bucks a piece just the planes without yeah. anything in it well they went on sale for 10 bucks a piece i grabbed a few now i can't find nothing else for them <clears throat> but man those suckers haul holy crap them are wicked <laughs> I took that fuck wolf, shot it up in the air, and that thing moves. Probably like a 180 size motor in it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that thing moved out pretty good. But I know I've <clears throat> the control line thing is one of the one of the hobbies in this field that I've never really completed. You know what I mean? When I was a kid, my dad started me on this, and then you know he worked for Ford. Then he started working a lot of hours and all that shit ended. Uh, so it was just me. And I really didn't have nobody to fly with when I was a kid. So, you know, I just kind of fell away from it. And I started building. I, I was building more than I was actually doing anything. Yeah. So uh blew my, my dad's ringmaster a couple times without smashing it. That was pretty cool to head up. Yeah, Fox 35 on it. Well, wow. yeah. yeah, I guess probably more Ringmasters have probably flown with Fox 35s than any other kind of engine. Yeah, I thought that's what it was supposed to be, you know. Yeah, because that's the era. That's the era it came out in, too. So. Right. It was the combo. I think so, Fox manufacturing is about defunct now. It seems that way. Yeah, they're they're out of business, aren't they? Uh, they are, as far as model airplane engines go. Whether or not they're doing machine work for other kinds of customers, I don't have any idea. Really? Yeah, it's kind of sad. <clears throat> you know, I was like an icon. That's that's yeah. what I heard, anyways. Fox was, Fox was a thing, Fox was a thing. But, you know, just like everything else, you know, radio control airplanes came out and the control line died. So, that's what, that's what kind of upsets me a little bit. You go to these shows, everything's radio controlled, man. Well, what about Everybody's radio forgotten how fun it is to fly control line. Yeah, you know what? Because you have to think about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Everything's so easy now. The radio systems, <clears throat> man, I got a radio that I can hook up to 250 different airplanes, all right? Memory for all the settings, all you do is click a button, it binds it to that receiver. Whoa, big thunder over here. It's raining like hell. Oh, Anyways, well, uh, I heard that. Did you hear, yeah. did you hear yeah. it? <laughs> yeah, I did, yeah. So, uh, you know. It, it, it's so easy and then the this the system they have three uh three axis or three gyros inside these things now they're these stabilized receivers. yeah they stabilize the plane so it's like which is okay for me because it, it takes that roll into the ground thing <laughs> well the button and thing levels it out yeah it's 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 good for learning and getting the hang of it you can Turn the uh, self stabilization off and fly it. And if you start to lose it, you just turn the stabilization back on, I guess, and it'll recover by itself. There's all kind of levels you can do. You got uh, uh, the settings are just unbelievable. Everything that you can do with those. I took uh, a four channel airplane with air lines, a rudder, an elevator, and a throttle. And I created the airlines. I turned them into flap-arounds. Just with the settings on the, the radio. 
So I got yeah. landing flaps now. So pretty neat. But this is the one thing that that you know that intrigues me because everything's pretty much mechanical on it. Everything. Everything about what you're doing on a control line airplane, everything is mechanical. Yeah. There's there's no electronics to it. That's right. You know what I mean? That's what's cool about it. Yep. Uh, Except that now, since uh, the electrics have timed engine runs, they're letting us uh, IC guys put shutoff timers on them if we want to. But really? I don't. Have, I don't have one. I, I still meter my fuel. If it, if the weather gets 20 degrees hotter between rounds, I know to back off the fuel and lean out the needle, or you know. Right. Well, that's what makes it. That's what that's, makes. That's what makes you good because that's what you yeah, I mean, that's, it a whole, that's a whole part of the hobby in itself. That's what I like messing around with it, learning it and understanding it. There's electronic, you know, they're cool and all. I mean, I've got electric. All of my planes are electric right now. All of them, but, you know, they're cool. They're easy. They're clean, but there ain't, there ain't nothing like, you know, the, the smell of nitro and caster and the sound you know oh, yeah. <clears throat> tuning it out <clears throat> i mean I've, I've blown just in the last few days i went through a half a gallon of gas just trying to trim these things out making sure that when i fly it ain't gonna take a dump on me while i'm upside down <laughs> yeah you know, you know so this this is what i like about it it's cool i like the old school stuff i'm uh yeah, if I was to be reborn again, it'd be back in the 40s when you got the fighters were all mechanical, pissed and shit. None of this jet crap, you know? I'm not... You know what they're doing with the F-16s over in Arizona? We oh, got a, they're making them remote control, aren't they? Yeah, they're turning them into drones. And not, not to destroy, you know, not to be shot at. They're using them to fly missions now. Like, they just... Use their, uh, they just made their first drone flight probably about a month or two ago. They announced it, and it flew us. Uh, it flew a mission. I don't know, you know, just a practice or whatever. <coughs> Isn't that crazy? Yeah. It's gonna be just like the movies. You know. Wow. I just uh, got an email that Ed Ruane had uh, posted over on Stunt Hanger that he had tried to sign in here under his wife, Rebecca's account. And uh, that's who that's who we were seeing. And uh, so he, he was having trouble with that. So he's going to get his computer stuff together and try to try us another time. So uh, yeah. I'll have to uh, walk, him, walk him through it. But uh, he was almost done. We just couldn't get him all hooked up. So, but uh, that was, that was Ed, Ed Rain. He's a member of my Huntersville club actually and so uh yeah. i'll get with him and we'll get it figured out yeah i fig i figured she wasn't a, a control line girl yeah she looked more like a uh, like a guardian yeah. girl. have you ever seen <laughs> uh, uh a member <laughs> named eddie r posting what's that on stunt hanger uh i don't eddie usually, r. i usually don't hang out on stunt hanger uh, for the reason that i i don't like spending a lot of time on a computer you know, I mainly got on the stun hanger just to get some info, and then I saw you guys, and I started getting with that. Yeah. But I I haven't really looked at everything in stun hanger. I'm, if I continue with the control line stuff, I probably will. Yeah. You know. Well, anyway, that's yeah. He was one of our club guys, so I'll get with him, and we'll figure out how to get him hooked up so he can come in and chat with us. That's cool. I'm surprised nobody else showed up tonight. Well, everybody doesn't like you. You know, everybody doesn't spend a lot of time on stun hanger. So unless they saw my announcement, uh, yeah. um, nobody knew we were coming on. So. What's uh What's going on with Friday night? You got plans? Yeah, I'm going to the beach. I'm going saltwater fishing this oh, week. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, I didn't know that was tomorrow. That's cool. And since we canceled the Wednesday hangout, I figured 
you know, we'd done Monday, so I'd go ahead and do one tonight just just so I could get two of them in during the week. Yeah. That's good. Sparky's going to be back home uh, next week, I think, if I understood right. So maybe he'll uh, do a couple of them, host a couple of them, too. That way me and him can switch off and neither one of us is committed every single every single night. Are you, uh, is he, he's not Brodeck, is he, is that, isn't that over? Yeah, it's over. I think he's in Dayton, um, although the hotel room looked like the same one he was staying in at Brodeck, but he goes out of town to work, so he stays in a hotel while he's working during the week. Yeah. And they don't have good enough uh, bandwidth at most of the hotels for him to be able to uh, host the uh, hangouts. <clears throat> yeah, I really want to go to the Nationals. That I've never been to one. I'm just trying to figure out the best way to approach it. That's all. That's all on site. I mean, it's it's. Is it right? Isn't a museum there? There is. Is that where the Nationals are on that property? It is. Yeah, it's at the AMA headquarters in Muncie. And the museum is the headquarters. Uh, the museum, the AMA offices and everything is there. I've never been there either, but that's just what I gather from reading about it. Oh, you've never been to the Nationals? I thought you were. Oh, no, no. I don't, I don't do much long distance travel because I've got, uh, I'm kind of tethered to my local dialysis clinic. And uh, even if I, even if I could arrange to use a clinic and, another town it would it would burn months uh, uh three days of the week and uh it's not like i can get that treatment and then get out and go flying because i'm i'm totally retarded when i get through with a, a treatment and the rest of the day i feel like crap so i have to go sleep it off so, and it, it would just not be it would not be a good experience for me so i go where you know huntersville is 90 minutes away. I can stay there, go on a Friday, and um, uh, um, you know, after dialysis, then come back on a Sunday and back and home, you know, ready to go to the clinic on Monday morning. And uh, triple trees the same way, 90 minutes away. So those are those are about it from my contest. Possibly Jacksonville in December, but uh, that's about as far as I'm gonna get away from home. All of these week-long events like Brodac and the Nats, and that just wouldn't work out at all for me. I wouldn't. I would not be able to have much fun. You look like you're frozen, Chris. Are you still with me? I think your phone crapped out again. Okay, so we got dead air. Oh no! I'll wait for you to come back in. If you can make it back, we'll keep chatting a little bit. But I'm gonna go ahead and close it up early anyway. It's eleven o'clock here, so uh, I uh, I think when you get back in, we'll go a few more minutes and then then call it a night. And meanwhile, I'll sit here eating eating starbursts. I like starbursts, but they put them in these little wax wrappers that um, and they're hard to open. Especially if you just cut your fingernails, it's hard to get the wrappers open. <laughs> okay, there is. Chris's avatar, the marionette, which I thought was his uh, child, but uh, now I know better. That must be Chris signing back in.
yeah, we're going to head out to the beach tomorrow, early afternoon, probably be there around uh, <clears throat> four or five o'clock and kind of hang out Friday night with our friends and get up and go down to the beach. We'll probably drive down to Polly's Island. My friends live at Surfside Beach, which is about 20 miles up the up the coast from uh, from Polly's and fish down there. Fishing's usually pretty good at Polly's. And I've got my favorite spots down there. That's where I grew up going when we go to the South Carolina coast is Polly's Island. I grew up going to different beaches, Edisto when I was really little and then Myrtle before it got developed. But now going to Myrtle Beach is more like going to the freaking fair roller coasters and foot long hot dogs. That's not what comes to my mind when I think of the beach and neither is high rise hotels, none of which does Polly's have. It's all just it's all just houses, just beach houses and dunes and beach and enough people walking up and down the beach shell hunting to make it interesting. We might have lost old Chris. It's just me now, so that can't be too entertaining for all you folks. So well, I'll tell you what, I'll pop over to the YouTube side for a second and see if I see anybody. The Thursday night hangout. No, it looks like Terry Forbes was the last one to post, and they don't put timestamps on there, so I don't know why. I am. Okay, you made it back. Yeah, you, <clears throat> you just totally disappeared on me. I'm yeah, okay. you were completely gone. You locked up, and then you were gone for a good while, and then the marionette with the white glasses came back. I right. checked on YouTube while you were gone, and there's nothing happening over there. Yeah. Huh. That's weird, because you just locked up, too, and disappeared. Got the same while thing. you were uh, while you were away, I just uh, started talking about the South Carolina beaches and uh, my okay. upcoming fishing trip. So you didn't miss anything. I think I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up pretty soon because I want to get in bed before too late tonight. So I'm well rested yeah, for a big day tomorrow. Yeah, me too. I gotta work in the morning, so. Uh... You gonna sh fish off the shore, or, or are you gonna go off a pier? I stand right on the beach with my feet in the sand and cast it out into the surf. And Polly's yeah. Island, uh, where I like to fish, has we call them groins, but um, that was the name of the wooden structures about a hundred feet long that jut out into the water every uh, couple of thousand yards down the beach to break up the currents well they get barnacles and stuff all over them that are good yeah. for attracting Ooh. fish to come feed and uh now and uh, uh you know as as uh they've aged the groins have the wooden groins have kind of fallen apart so they've um replaced them all with riprap just granite giant boulders and um uh, yeah. and they're starting to get a good growth of barnacles on them too so they're equally good for attracting fish especially the uh, ones that like to, that have teeth like the drum that like to get up on them and crack the barnacles off and right yeah those and and all the lots of little fish and crabs that hang around them and um that's so cool. yeah it's good, good fishing I'm, I'm looking forward to it you going by yourself or are you taking a family me and my wife are going and my uh my son, he's up in the air about it. He may or may not show up. So, right. yeah, I hope he hope he comes. He's always interesting um, and good yeah. company. So. All right. Well, I hope, hope you have a good time. I it'd be nice to be able to join you on that trip. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That sounds like fun staying out. Well, hopefully, I'll come back fishing. with a good fishing report. 
So uh, I guess I guess we'll see. What'd you say? What'd you say? At least take some pictures. Oh yeah, I will. I got the camera all charged up and and uh, ready to go. In fact, I think it's already in the car. So yeah, I'll get some good beach pictures. Hopefully, I can get a picture of me with a big fish. Yeah. Or, or at least a big stringer of little fish, panfish. That'd be all right too. Yeah, something. All yeah. right, well, you have a good weekend then. Okay, you do too, Chris, and uh, we'll see you next week. See you next week. All right. All right. Meantime, uh, don't forget, everybody that might be watching, uh, don't forget to uh, subscribe to us. Um, subscribe to Stunt Hanger too, and uh, on uh, YouTube, give us a like. And uh, in the meantime, tight lines, fair winds, and we'll see y'all next week. Good night.